the Palmetto State, home to not only myself, but 5.2 million hardworking American citizens. Driving along I-85 in the upstate region of our state, you will not only find beautiful waterfalls and scenic mountains, but also a booming automotive industry. Our state is a top exporter of vehicles in the entirety of the United States, thanks mostly to the largest BMW plant in the world being situated in Greer. We also are the lead producer of tires with the North American headquarters of Michelin in Greenville. The state brought in roughly $27 billion in 2019 through the automotive industry, with the upstate bringing in a majority of the revenue. After a short trip down I-26 and surviving Malfunction Junction, you will make it to the Low Country. This historic region with all of its cypress swamps and sandy beaches is a huge tourist attraction for our friends and from out of town. The Low Country hosts fascinating and relaxing getaways such as Hilton Head Island, Charleston, and Myrtle Beach. Overall, the state brought in around $24 billion through the tourism industry in 2019, with most of the profit coming from these cities. Although both of these regions and their top industries are important to our state's economy, it is the Midlands region and its primary industry of agribusiness that brings our state the most money. Top products include corn, soybeans, and last but not least, our most lucrative industry, poultry. Agribusiness produced nearly $47 billion in 2019, with the Midlands region bringing in a vast amount of it. The agricultural sector is very important to the state's livelihood and helps not only bring in good profits, but also creates thousands of jobs. Aside from the economy, our state faces two other menacing threats that requires the aid of the agricultural sector. Over the last few decades, the climate crisis has caused many challenges for South Carolinians, and it continues to worsen every day. Over the next few decades, this obstacle will threaten our daily lives in many ways. First of all, South Carolina continues to get warmer each year. Over the last 50 years alone, the average temperature has increased by 2.3 degrees Fahrenheit. This increase of temperature is not only bad for our health, but also that of our crops and livestock. Heat stress for crops and animals is already increasing across the state. Although it is not much of a threat to us closer to the middle of the state, our friends and family along the coast are going to start experiencing more and more flooding with sea level rise. Within the next 100 years, heavily populated cities such as Charleston could be below sea level or experience more flooding events. Extreme weather events like droughts and floods will intensify in the decades to come, especially at the rate that the planet is warming. We are already seeing drier droughts that are lasting longer. We may also have to relive similar events to Hugo in the decades to come. Finally, South Carolina's population continues to grow rapidly. We have gained nearly half a million people since 2015 and are expecting to see anywhere from one and a half to two and a half million more over the next two decades. South Carolina is currently the eighth fastest growing state. On top of an, on top of an environmental conundrum, we're also facing a severe health crisis amongst our population. The underlying cause of this issue mostly revolves back to a growing fast food industry. As of 2019, South Carolina is ranked 10th in the nation for obesity with an adult obesity rate of 35.4%. This trend has continued an upward path for the last three decades and does not show any sign of faltering. South Carolina also ranked sixth in the nation for diabetes with an adult diabetes rate of 13.4% with a similar upward trend. We are also ranked eighth in the nation for hypertension or high blood pressure. This health concern is extremely rampant in South Carolina, especially in rural and low income areas. All three of these factors contribute to a shortened life expectancy compared to the rest of the states. The hurdle then becomes, how can the agricultural sector help our state combat both the climate the climate crisis and promote a healthier lifestyle. There is no one size fits all answer to this. However, there are certain measures that can be taken that are proven to help to a certain degree and every little bit helps when it comes to tackling these issues. 
One important but challenging step that can be taken is growing corn and soybeans for human consumption rather than feed or fuel. Although we have one of the highest obesity rates, we also have one of the highest hunger rates amongst the states. Over 800,000 people in our Palmetto State are currently facing hunger. This number equates to roughly one out of every five people. These people are not strangers. These people are our neighbors, coworkers, friends, or even relatives, and they all need our help. Corn takes up the most acreage of any other crop in the state. However, only between one quarter and one third of it goes to feeding our people directly. The rest either goes to ethanol production or feed for our state's poultry and cattle. Soybean production is even more shocking, with only a quarter of it going to feeding our citizens and the other three quarters going to the animals. Although most of the animals are ultimately eaten, a lot of calories and protein are lost in translation when feeding livestock. By reducing the amount sold to livestock companies and increasing the amount sold to local stores or citizens directly, we would not only be helping the malnourished, but also promoting healthier diets, as corn is high in vitamin C. Vitamin C also helps reduce heart disease and cancer, which are both factors associated with obesity and hypertension. Your next question may be, what will the livestock then consume? A solution to this issue would be free range chickens. Allowing chickens to roam and feed will not only reduce the amount of corn and soybeans required to feed them, but free range chickens are actually healthier. It is nat they are naturally higher in protein and nutrients, which would help promote a more balanced diet for our citizens. Although free ranging broilers might not allow for a higher quantity to be produced, it will produce a higher quality chicken, which are more profitable. Moving away slowly from livestock production by incorporating a free range system also helps cut carbon emissions from this sector. Lowering the carbon footprint will help decrease the rate at which South Carolina is facing environmental issues. Alternative farming methods, including hydroponics, aquaponics, and aeroponics, also drastically cut down on carbon emissions and resource consumption. All three methods are similar in approach and are known as soilless growing methods. Hydroponics includes growing plants in nutrient-rich water. Aquaponics is similar to hydroponics in that plants are grown in nutrient-rich water but it incorporates fish into the system in which fish waste actually provides some of the necessary nutrients for plant production. Aeroponics involves growing plants in air or mist environments. The plant roots are sprayed with nutrient-rich water. All three systems are more environmentally friendly than traditional growing methods. Depending on the plant produced, they can cut carbon emissions from 50 to 75% on average and reduce water usage by 70 to 90%. Although the plant options for these soilless systems are more limited, they are still profitable. One such plant includes hemp, which is usually used as an alternative to marijuana, as hemp contains a smaller amount of THC and is legal to grow in 47 states. These methods of farming are also usually done indoors in order to more easily control the growing conditions. If broilers transition to free range systems, old broiler facilities can be transformed into greenhouses for these alternative growing methods in order to increase profits and jobs. Selling locally is also very important for health and staving off emissions. Selling at your local farmer's markets or directly to local grocers or individuals cuts emissions from the transportation sector. This also decreases the amount of food that is available for fast food retailers, which will help increase healthy food options for South Carolinians. Renewable energy, especially solar in South Carolina, is incredibly powerful at not only cutting emissions, but reducing electrical bills. Agricultural practices are energy intensive and can rack up high rates with the power company. Solar panel installations can reduce or completely cut the cost. Currently, South Carolina is one of a few states to offer a state solar tax credit. This tax credit will reimburse you for 25% of the cost of your solar panel installation fee up to $35,000. On top of the state tax credit, there is a federal solar tax credit available for up to 26% of the remaining costs after the state credit has been applied. This tax credit will remain at 26% until the end of 2022, where it will then be 22% in 2023. After 2023, this federal tax credit will no longer be applicable. 
Investing in solar is a good long-term financial decision with the system practically paying itself off in seven years on average. Altogether, these benefits bring about a reduction in carbon emissions, a reduction in electrical costs, an increase in locally sourced food and healthier diets that would help decrease obes obesity, hypertension, and diabetes, all while helping tackle the climate issue. They would also create thousands of jobs in the agricultural sector and energy sector, ultimately increasing profit in South Carolina. Not only would the agricultural sector be paving a positive path for South Carolina, but it would also contribute to sustainable development on a global scale. The proposed alternatives would contribute towards two of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, zero hunger and decent work and economic growth.